This part of the training is going to be talking about distracted driving, fatigue, and change blindness. I want to emphasize that driving is difficult. Driving requires a significant number of actions and activities. It's complicated, as you know. You're dealing with the vehicle, you're dealing with passengers, you're dealing with the road, with weather, with the traffic, construction, all sorts of things. We certainly recognize that. And the one of the important issues to think about is how we get distracted by anything. Um, it's not just during driving. So very clear thoughts on, on distracted driving. Uh, there are three types of distraction. Uh, visual, manual, and cognitive. There are distractions in driving that are part of driving. There are distractions in driving that happen. There are distractions that take place as a part of driving. There are distractions that take place because of us, and, and there are distractions that take place because of things around us. So when you think of visual, distractions, the three types, visual, manual, and cognitive. So visual is what you see, manual is what your hands are doing, and cognitive is what you're thinking. So visual, when you take your eyes off the road for any reason, you're being distracted. That reason could be to look at a, a light that's come on on the dashboard because you've turned to a passenger or a passenger has approached you or because there's something happening outside the road. Anything that takes your eyes off the road is a distraction. I want you to think about distraction as a part of driving and the part of distraction that's that you can control versus the part of distraction that you might not uh, be able to control because of your current situation. So visual, taking your eyes off the road, manual, taking your hands off the wheel. Anytime you remove your hands from the wheel or a hand from the wheel to reach for something, to touch something, to move something, to drink something, that's a distraction. Cognitive is when anything that takes your mind off of what you're doing. So if you have a lot of thoughts about, if you're thinking about problems or issues, or you think something's going wrong with the bus, that's a cognitive distraction. Those three things together create a situation where um, that's called change blindness, where things that are happening right in front of you are not being registered in your brain, and therefore you're reacting incorrectly and perhaps in a risky way. So big six driving distractions, your physical condition. Okay, let's think about this. How many of you in the last year, and I'm gonna ask you to during this presentation to even jot down or, or write down or just think about some answers and to my questions, and then we'll review them during the, the discussion period. In the last year, are you in the same physical condition this year as you were a year ago? Are you in better condition? Are you in worse condition? Have you kept moving? Have you gained weight? Have you lost weight? Have you had medical issues? So your physical condition can be a distraction. How many times have you driven? So here's a question for everyone. How many times have you driven when you have not felt well or questioned whether you should go to work that day, but you drove anyway? Every time you do that, your physical condition is a distraction because you don't feel well, you have a clogged head, you're sneezing, um, your stomach is upset, whatever it might be. So your physical condition is very important. And if you're in great shape and feel good about things and have slept well, you're ready to drive. If you haven't, then you're increasing the risk of distraction when you drive. So you need to find a solution to that. Um, every one of us has done that, and there's a chat from uh, Larry Kemp. Uh, every one of us, I'm sure, all we're trying to do here is to get you to think about the fact that that can be a distraction and to correct or compensate for it. Your mental or emotional issues, mental health and emotional issues are very important. Driving is complex. Your lives are complex. Um, your company's complex, your passengers are complex. There are all things that add into the way you're thinking about things as you're driving. Um, leaving things, uh, you, you've got to pack away any problems or issues 
um, that you're that are overwhelming you or think that you're spending time thinking about when you get on that bus think about packing away all your family financial personal business issues pack them away in a bag and put them under that bus because you need to be clear and thoughtful during your driving when you get off that bus and passengers are <clears throat> taken care of you can go back to them to that that piece of luggage and unpack some of your issues. For the last year, many of us have been sitting at home or limited in our work, limited in our connections to people. We all feel different than we did a year ago, and that's going to impact your driving and any distractions um, that, that it may add. If you're missing your family, your friends, your work, recognize that as you go back to work. If you're concerned about um, physical issues, COVID's been a real concern. Have you had the vaccine, vaccination? Have your passengers had vaccinations? Are people wearing masks? Are you wearing masks? Um, the way you react to that is important because that's a distraction. If that's all you're thinking about when you're on the bus and you're driving anyway because you need the money or you need to get back to work, uh, that's an emotional issue that's a distraction. Okay. Let's get something more concrete, the vehicle condition is, and issues. Jeff talked about pre-trip inspection. Dan talked about aspects of customer care. The vehicle's condition is important. If that vehicle is not in top condition and you start hearing sounds or seeing lights flashing or warning lights, it's going to distract you from your driving. You have to have a plan and a way to think about how to manage the vehicle, how to depend on your pre-trip, how to depend on your maintenance department, how to call back to dispatch. Yes, you're the captain of the ship when it's moving, but you need support behind you. So that vehicle condition is important. Don't take a bus out that you think is really in bad shape and um, work with your, your, your maintenance staff or your crew to make sure that it's working. What's happening inside the vehicle, what's happening outside the vehicle, and, and our, our, we're going to talk about that in, on the next slide, and your own behavior is important. So um, vehicle distractions, the vehicles uh, are complex. I'm, I'm going to ask you to think about how long you've been driving, um, how many years, how many types of vehicles have you experienced in those years? And, and I'm going to ask how many of you have been driving for 25 or more years? How many of you have been driving for 10 to 15 years? How many of you have been driving for 5 to 10 years? And how many have been driving for 5 years? In that range, there's been every change known to man in the technology of vehicles. So the age of the vehicle you're driving uh, can itself be a distraction. So you have to be comfortable with the specific vehicle. And if you change types of vehicles, MCI to Prevo to another type of vehicle, uh, Von Hool or whatever it might be, every time you change vehicles, you need to really think about getting comfortable with that vehicle. The, the specifications and the instrumentation is complicated. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The size and weight of the vehicle. Size and weight make a difference in how you drive. You've got to be comfortable. Mechanical condition of the vehicle we talked about, long-term maintenance issues versus short-term issues, and technology and device, devices and alerts. Dan talked about technology. I'm going to talk about it a little bit as we go further. But technology is your friend, and te technology can create distractions. You've got to be able to figure out how to concentrate on the driving part, which is difficult with all of this technology. Inside the vehicle, passenger related issues. We could spend the rest of the day talking about experiences you've had with passengers. And I first just want to thank you for your, your public relations skills, your ability to communicate with people, your ability to calm people down, your ability to manage difficult situations, because we all know that we can't predict what the passenger related issues will be, but passengers, there's always seems to be someone or some part of the group that wants something different than another part of the group. All that is fine, except you're driving. And when you're driving, that's your primary focus. You've got to off 
load that responsibility of whether people are happy or not at the moment at the time and be very clear and direct. Your goal is to drive, not to um, have com conversations with them about issues that can and should not be managed while you're driving. So noise, movies, Wi-Fi related issues, conversations, just within the bus, that's a distraction. Office communication, does your office call you, text you, communicate with you. We, uh, EVRs, ELDs, uh, lane departure, collision avoidance, uh, tire pressure monitoring system, all those have sounds and beeps. So think about how you're going to block that out as you're driving. Office communication, again, we, we if there are any dispatchers and managers on here, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. Don't communicate with your drivers when they're driving. Uh, I want you to go back, all of us, to go back 30 years before cell phones. If you were driving back then, or even if you weren't a professional driver back then, when you left in your own car or in a, in a commercial vehicle on an on a assignment and an assigned trip, without any form of communication, somehow you managed to get where you were going because you had a map, and you didn't have a lot of communication with people. So any communication taking place within the bus is a distraction. Uh, on board our personal navigation systems, first of all, in terms of navigation systems, we highly recommend that you use commercial navigation systems only and commercial mapping systems, not, um, not uh, other personal uh, navigation systems because where your vehicle can go versus a private vehicle is very important to make that distinction. And if you're driving and you're following a uh, a personal uh, onboard or personal navigation system and it takes you in the wrong place or to a road that you can't cross a bridge or to a dead end that you have to back up, that creates risk. So that's a distraction. Instrument display, Know that what it is and don't overreact to that when you're driving. Tour guide, tour guide responsibilities. So if there is a tour guide before the trip, you, you need to have a, a discussion as who's doing what. The tour guide is not in charge of your driving. You are. The tour guide might think they are or want to be, but a, a good professional communication beforehand will help you get that under control so that during the trip, they can assist you um, to assist you when you need assistance, or you can ask them to stand down until you're able to talk. Okay, so new issues to consider. This is always new issues as vehicles get more and more complicated. And then we just had a question in the chat about this. Um, how many devices are you managing in that vehicle? Um, and how many have LCD displays? So those questions, I want you to think about that for a minute. And then I'm gonna ask you how many of you are over the age of 40 and you don't have to answer that officially. I'm asking these questions for a reason. Um, devices and reading them or responding to them while they are helpful for information may very much in fact be, um, uh, maybe, maybe more of a distraction. So think about that. Okay. Symbols, we, at the bottom we see all these symbols. Um, if you, if some of them are familiar and to us in everyday life, those of us over 40, um, the more familiar they are, the better we are at reading them. If we're uh, over 40 and there are new symbols introduced, generally it's harder for us to adapt to them. If you're younger, you may have a sense of that. Most important thing, if you don't understand a symbol, just ask for help. Just say, what does this mean? talk to your maintenance department. So let's talk about the claims perspective. Um, Dan talked about managing an accident scene. Jeff talked about pre-trip and following distance and turning. And uh, I wanna talk about how we blend all of this and anytime there is a claim. So first of all, you're held to a higher standard because you are a, you are a professional driver. A distracted driver can be the basis for a plaintiff's attorney um, 
after a claim to attack you, your company, and you as a driver, saying this would not have happened if you weren't distracted. So that's why it's very important to be off all devices and, and to make sure you're focused on the complex task of driving. Um, so we want to make sure that from a claims perspective, distracted driving is not an option because sometimes the facts of the crash are, are not the issue. It's the way you're perceived during the claim settlement. Um, actions of a distracted driver can lead to accusations of reckless behavior, and we don't want anyone uh, to, do, to do this. Um, so we want you to think about the fact that um, if you're distracted, you're on the phone, or you're doing something that you that's documented, uh, is a problem with settling a claim. Okay, telematics. Many vehicles have telematics. They tell us how fast we're going. Your company gets reports. You might get alerts. The important thing about telematics is that if you don't respond to the information you're getting or deal with it um, and have a crash, that's going to be known. So if you're going over the speed limit, and I think uh, Jeff mentioned stay at the speed limit or just below it, even though that's sometimes difficult within traffic or within um, a location, just think about the fact that just stay go slower, stay in the speed limit because you won't get those alerts. And secondly, uh, if there's a claim settlement or it goes to court, uh, everyone's reasonable. People can recognize five or seven or eight miles above the speed limit is not crazy. But if you're going 15 miles above the, uh, the speed limit as a commercial driver, that's a problem. So know your company policy and deal with information. Um, okay. If you're speeding, and there are ways to document that in telematics, or if you're pulled over in a roadside stop for excessive speed, all that information can be used against your company during a claim settlement. Okay, next piece is pedestrian bicycles and motor scooters. And with, with, the, se with the spring season, summer season uh, coming upon us, and with people coming back out of their houses after COVID, and with travel increasing, et cetera, in the next six months, we're gonna, you're gonna see a lot more pedestrians, bicyclists, and motor scooters. This is a continual challenge. Distractions are everywhere, particularly in, a, in an urban setting, but also on the highway as well. You might find um, vehicles driving slowly. Uh, you might find people moving around the highway after an accident scene. So in major cities, we have motor scooters, bicycles, and pedestrians. People have been used to small, lower traffic, fewer cars, and the ability to move around more freely during the pandemic. That's gonna change. Important, know your route and review it every day. If you know your route and you anticipate where pedestrians are, you're gonna be able to anticipate how to manage it. And think about who has it right away. Generally, the pedestrian has a right away. Bicycles and motor scooters may not have the right away. However, you do not, you're going to have to adapt your driving around them. Um, think about yourself as the pedestrian or yourself as the bicyclist, or if your child or family member was walking around the area you're driving. Put in your mind the fact that you, you, how would you want to be. Um, how would you want to handle that situation? And just be very careful around pedestrians and bicyclists and motor scooters. Slow down. Okay, you can look, you, you, Jeff mentioned this, Dan mentioned this, using your mirrors and scanning as you get to an intersection, look right, left, right, or in some instances, if you're merging or coming from a particular position, left, right, left, but the scanning is important. Assume that any pedestrian or bicyclist will dart out. Assume that the pedestrian, um, as the lower right photo shows, has headsets on or earbuds, is not paying attention because you don't have, they're going to do what they're going to do and you, you don't, you have a big vehicle that's tough to slow down um, and react quickly. So go slow, cover your brake, include your mirrors, know your mirrors, know how the dimensions of those mirrors and, and calculating distance. If you have cameras, exterior cameras on your bus or, ex, or these new mirror uh, camera mirrors, that might be helpful. But just slow down, cover your brake, assume people are going to jump out. 
Okay, we're going to into the fatigue parts of this now. Um, fatigue is um, something that we all deal with. So we've been doing this for two and a half hours now. Everyone is starting to lose concentration. The same is true when you're driving. And as in the, as in the question and the polling question, getting good sleep is very important. I want to talk about one particular part of fatigue, which is post-lunch dip or post-lunch sleepiness. Very, very important to recognize, uh, very important to recognize that about about 12 hours from the midpoint of your sleep. So if you go to sleep at 10 and you get up at 6, your midpoint is 2 a.m. Uh, 12 hours later at 2 p.m., biologically, every human being has nothing to do with what we're doing. We'll get tired about 12 hours from the midpoint of our sleep. So you're going to generally be tired in the afternoon. It's called post-lunch dip. That is a very dangerous time to be driving and requires that you pay attention. So think about your sleep, uh, the way you sleep, and the times you're going to get tired. And it's natural. It's part of our human body. So what are the impact? Uh, what's the impact of sleep loss? Uh, so without good sleep, it impairs our thinking, um, it impairs your thinking and your cognitive performance. Remember, we talked about the three types of distractions. It reduces your alertness level, and um, when you're driving, you need to be alert. So does reaction time. Well, in driving, you need good reaction time. And increases the likelihood of falling asleep under mental or physically boring conditions. Driving is boring over time. It takes a lot of steps. It's, a, it's technically complex, but it's boring, particularly in vehicles with comfortable seats and all sorts of technology to help you. So I want you to think about the last time you got bored when you were driving and did you get distracted? I'm trying to link all this together. So um, tasks that are relatively uninteresting or complex and longer than 30 minutes, well, that's driving. It's uh, uninteresting in certain ways. It is complex because you've got a lot of things to worry about, generally longer than 30 minutes. Uh, they require a very high level of concentration and they are especially impacted by sleep loss. It doesn't matter whether you're a, a driver, prof professional driver, a teacher, a doctor, an astronaut, um, a, a retail worker, a physical worker in construction, it doesn't matter what you're doing, nothing it doesn't matter who you are. Every human body requires sleep, and the reduction in sleep changes our ability. We certainly wouldn't want a cardiac surgeon operating on us if they hadn't slept the night before. And much is true. Uh, much is true for driving as well. So microsleeps are when you are actually sleeping with your eyes open. And so, question: If you've ever, how many of you have ever driven past an exit? when you knew you were gonna get off at that exit and suddenly you find yourself past that exit and you realize you need to, to go back or turn around or get off at the next exit. What probably happened there was you were in a micro sleep. Your eyes were open, you were driving, you were functioning, but your brain was not. So that's called a micro sleep. It happens all the time when we're driving, no matter how we're doing as professional drivers, good sleep helps you. Okay, measure performance. This is really interesting. Uh, and this is really about hours awake, the number of hours awake, not how much sleep you've gotten. When you are awake, if you look at this, look at the green line on this, on this chart. When you're awake more than 16 hours, you, anyone, any human being, we begin, our performance starts to decrease and we're performing at the level of a 0.04 alcohol concentration. When you're awake 22 hours, that's the red line, um, it's equal to 0.08. Um, so think about amount of time that you're awake and then you're asleep. And this shows it just in another graph, which is that after 13 hours of being awake, our performance starts to deteriorate. So when I want to ask you, how many of you have been awake 18, 20 hours on a long trip, not necessarily driving that time, but from the time you woke up to the time you stopped, if it's more than 13, 14, or 15 hours um, of awake time, your 
your performance is deteriorating, which is why the last couple of hours of every trip is so difficult. We want to sleep between 12 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's normal human beings. That's the way we want to sleep. If you're driving at night or have a later schedule or an earlier schedule, every hour you're awake in, during the time your body wants to sleep is pulling your sleep and distracting you. And we want, uh, and between the hours of 1 and 4 p.m., that's the post-lunch dip. So most of us want to sleep at night. If you're sh shifting schedules, you need to recognize that you're going to be tired and distracted. Okay, six hours of sleep makes you impatient, stressed, irritable, depressed, and more likely to make mistakes and impair your work performance. That's for anybody. So if any of those things happen to you, it's distracting you when you're driving. And I mean, all of us get impatient and stressed at different times, particularly in the last year. So think about this. Alertness leads fatigue, leads to problems in alertness. Problems in alertness lead to driving mistakes. Okay, so we want you to get as much sleep as possible, up to seven hours before work. Limit heavy meals, watch what you're eating, uh, learn body signals and warnings of fatigue for you. Certain things, uh, I know when I get cranky, which, which Dan and Jeff will tell you is pretty regular, when I get cranky, I know exactly what is happening in my body. And we get all of our messages and we get used to ourselves. Other people may not like it, but we get used to ourselves. Stop the bus, Dan mentioned this. Um, stop the bus, take a walk, uh, do a safety check, anything at all that will divert your attention from the repetitive behavior of driving. Limit your caffeine, use it only when necessary and needed, and caffeine will not keep, keep, caffeine will not keep you awake at a certain point in time. Dan mentioned this, your medication, over-the-counter medication, chew gum, open a window, drink water, sleep when you get to your destination, don't stay up another five hours, try to take sleep, take a nap, 30-minute naps are big, big helps, um, schedule your time off to relax, and, and always stop the bus and walk around. Change blindness. Okay, so... That is seeing, missing something right before your eyes. And we started by talking about this. And if you think about all the presentations today and all the information, change blindness. If you miss something in a pre-trip, if you miss a pedestrian to the side of the bus, if you're not focused on the turning lane, if you're not thinking about what uh, how to manage your driving and your passengers because you're distracted, you're going to miss right what's right before your eyes. How often do we hear drivers talk about the talk about I didn't see them or I I wasn't uh, I never saw that person. Um, they just stepped out. Well, the answer is they were there. You were there. Your brain didn't calculate that. So that's change blindness. Uh, we all have uh, focused attention and limited. Re uh, limited resources in our brain for driving. So that's why technology is helpful and a distraction. And that's why sleep is important. And what we'd anticipate what's happened before. So if you go back to driving now after a year and you have um, anticipate what that road or route or city uh, or area or destination was like before, it may have changed. Be open to this. Traffic patterns have changed. Constructions has changed. Entrances, exits have changed. Drop-off points have changed. And people around you and those routes have changed. So don't your brain expects what it knows from the past. It isn't always able to register what's happening right now. Change blindness. Something is right before your eyes, but it's what you don't see. So failure to detect uh, changes when you're driving can lead to a crash. So distractions, we talked about all the distractions. All those attract distractions can impact your ability to stay focused and take your attention away from what's right in front of you. Okay, so change blindness is a real issue connected to distraction and fatigue. Sleepiness equals distraction. We talked about visual, manual, and cognitive distraction leading to poor dis uh, driving decisions. Fatigue increases that. Uh, 
change blindness, not seeing what's right before your eyes and fatigue and distraction is a key element to that. Um, CBSA, Safe Driver Week, the most common citations, if we look to the bottom, is um, using a phone or any device. So that's pretty common, um, even though we have all sorts of regulation. It might not just be the phone, it might just be looking at the phone or a text. And most crashes are ca caused by poor driving decisions or uh, driving behaviors, and fatigue and distraction are common. Okay, review of distraction. Do not use your cell phone, text, or even look at your phone. Reaching, eating, talking to passengers, grooming, reading maps, GPS, ELDs, using a navigation system, eyes off the road to look at anyone or anything around you, traffic changes, etc. cetera. Uh, changing CDs, DVDs, adjusting air conditioning, making announcements. Those are all part of driving, but they're distractions. So we're, at coming, we're coming towards the end of our trip. And like at the end of any trip, the last couple of miles or the last period of that trip is often the most risky because we're tired, we're bored, uh, we're thinking of the next issues, we're thinking of where to park that bus, we're thinking of how to drop off passengers, we're thinking about um, getting some rest, we're thinking about um, unloading. All those things that you start thinking about as you approach your destination are all elements that create distractions towards the end of a trip. 